thanks everyone for coming. It's our first TikTok live, so it's quite exciting. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tuck it. We'll tuck it. <laughs> nice. So yeah, I'm Joe um, from the University of Plymouth. I'm an outreach and recruitment officer here. So I do a lot of work with sixth form students and colleges and working with like loads of students trying to get them into university and answering loads of questions that they have. And then we've got Ed here as well. Hi guys. So I'm a first year, well I've just finished my first year at University of Plymouth and I'm here to answer some questions today and I've just finished my first year in law. First year. How was that? Um, good, yeah, I am definitely made the right decision. It's a bit harder than Adels, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be good, isn't it? it? Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, yeah. What's been your favourite thing about coming to Plymouth so far for the, for the um, first year you've had? I think my favourite part of Plymouth is the campus, the, um, how it's so close to the beach, um, the Barbican, loads of shops, and yeah, it's just an amazing city. Everything's in walking distance, and I definitely made the right decision coming here. Nice. What's your favourite beach? Um, favourite beach, probably Boga Sand. Boga Sand's really nice. That's really a like that good one. one. Yeah, that's good. Mm. Whitsand Bay is quite nice near this island. But I don't think I've ever been Whitsand. It's like yeah. Cornwall side. It's a bit like longer and wider, but they don't mm. have like any shops or anything, so it's, it's literally just sand and sea. Just a beach. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, Law, are you excited about second year? Yes, definitely excited. Um, I've been had a lot of opportunities during the first year that I am able to continue to my second year, such as being a student ambassador, I'm going to be um, the events officer for the Law Society. Oh, cool. So there's definitely a lot of, um, how we can see, <laughs> Hello. Um, there's definitely a lot of opportunities that you can take into your second year as well, not just because you're a first year. That's cool. Did you join the Law Society in your first year then? Yes. And then obviously you must have run in like an election to become the events officer? Yes, yeah, like, uh, I can't remember what it's called, like an AGM, and yeah. they vote for you and you have to make a speech, which is scary, but it's definitely, <laughs> definitely worth it. <laughs> That's cool. Um, and what sort of events did they do and what sort of events are you going to do next year? Um, we have a cheese and wine event where there's 200 professionals with 100 students, which can sound very scary, but um, it's a great chance to um, connect with professionals and meet them and ask them about their law firms and what they do and stuff. Nice. <laughs> and then they do lots of competitions like negotiations, mooting, debating, where you, with other students at like you're already lawyers and yeah, yeah. <laughs> see who can be the best in these competitions. Yeah, that's really cool. That's that sounds exactly. classy. The cheese and wine's like classy, isn't it? Yeah. It's not just like, yeah, yeah. going to the pub and... <laughs> Definitely. We're all dressed in suits and... <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, super classy. I was part of the surfing society at uni, so mm. I was very much very away from <laughs> suits. <laughs> yeah. Um, Wetsuits is mm. what we had. Yeah. No, no suits. <laughs> yeah. No, that's really cool. Um, and yeah, you, so you came for a clearing yourself, didn't you? Yes. I was... Um, a year ago, around this time, I was just waiting on my results very anxiously, and as I'm sure many of you are feeling. Um, but yeah, and then it came results day, and I got a bit better than I expected, and then decided the gap, idea of a gap year kind of scared me on results day a bit, because yeah. um, summer I got a bit bored, and just, I think you, in sixth form, I was very like, oh, I could use a break, and then I got it, I was like, oh, I need to get on with it, really. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Kick um, into it. Yeah. Is in the same position as you guys a year ago, and it's very scary, but I promise you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it all works out in the end, doesn't it? Mm, it's just definitely. Yeah, the scary, like, unknown, mm. like, walking into it, like, blindly almost sometimes, isn't it? But yeah, it's a weird, it's a weird time in your life, definitely. Did you phone up the clearing call centre then? Yes. I yeah, mean, it sounds obvious, but, like, <laughs> is that, like, well, how did that go? Yeah, I think... Call centre? Well, I went to go get my results, uh, I'm not sure exactly what time in the morning, and then we kind of came home and I was like, had a big think, and then about like two-ish, I was like, I'm going to just call them, because I was really just scared of, like about calling them, but they were so lovely, it took about ten minutes just to put all my details in, and then eventually they phoned me back, not even like twenty minutes later, and they got me onto the course, so it was definitely easy, and yeah. So scared about like picking up the phone, but looking back, it's really <laughs> everyone was really nice. So would you say the hardest step is like pressing the dial button? Yeah, that's me with any phone call though. Like the doctors, uh, <laughs> just ordering like, an oh, like oh, yeah, <laughs> pressing the call button is scary. <laughs> cool. So okay, so basically just telling people to press the call button, mm -hmm. and then all the people on the call center are trained, so yes. they just guide you through it, really, don't they? Mm -hmm. They've got like scripts and things, haven't they? So. Yeah, and I think like my parents were trying to convince me, saying like even if you do, you don't have to go. Because I think that's what I was kind of scared of, like committing fully. But um, 
so flexible and they were so helpful with any questions I had and definitely just worth a call even if you're a bit mm. like I was yeah. but yeah what do you mean you were scared to commit fully what, what... well I was um I definitely know I wanted to go to university but I was like oh I don't know if I want to go this year next year or I was a bit like oh I don't know if I'll get in or not so I was just a bit like kind of wobbly with everything but I had a lot of questions for the poor girl that answered me but <laughs> she answered about like 10 questions about everything but she was super helpful yeah uh, okay cool Sweet. Um, that sounds great. I mean, in terms of like, yeah, the call center, the, the numbers on the website. Um, mm. So really easy to find, really easy to phone up. And then obviously, yeah, we've got, I think we've got nearly 90 students in the call center. So they'll be students like Ed. So yes. I think you're working in the call center yes, this year. <laughs> so we've got students like Ed and 89 other students and they're all in this massive room mm. and we train them for three or four days and they're literally just sat there waiting to help you. So just don't be afraid, like Ed says. Like yeah, sometimes the hardest part is pressing the call button, yes. um, and yeah, just just pick up the phone and, and we'll guide you through the rest. And it's not forceful at all either, is it? It's, no. it's much more just giving you the options for you to then make a choice. Yeah, it's not what I kind of thought it would be. I thought it would be a very like, I don't know, real like, oh, you haven't got the grades, or you have, or just they're very. It's not what you expect, but they're all really friendly and yes, <laughs> that's good. Um, yeah, and then in terms of that bit, what you can do is actually go on the website and pre-register. Um, so what that will do is just give you all of the information. Uh, sorry, you'll give us loads of information. So then when you phone up, um, we can just get your details up straight away. So it just cuts out a lot of um, a lot of just waiting on the phone. Like with the, the, the call center, they'll instead of them being like, oh, what's your name? Like, what's your name? Where'd you come from? Um, they'll be like, They'll, they'll already have that information and um, so it sort of makes it a lot easier and simpler and then they can just talk to you straight about your grades mm. and the, the course and then they can start looking at options for you so if you can pre-register that'll just save you a lot of time um, and get you in there which is which is good i think yes uh, did you pre-register on yours i did not and really? i probably should have because that would have cut out like <laughs> half my call <laughs> but yes that definitely sounds like a really good option if you're already thinking about it as well because i didn't really answer it on results day very spontaneous but you guys are probably more ahead of me than it's I scary was. time though isn't it like yeah. you, just, you don't know what's happening like everything's up, flipped upside down because mm. the results like yeah so it's totally fair like but yeah don't worry if you haven't pre-registered it's not the end of the world like obviously i got yeah. came in and got through absolutely fine which is good um so yeah i think we'll probably go to questions now um so is she we have to bring it in we'll, um, we'll get intimate um Let's scroll all the way to the top. So I think there was one from Samara first. So ah, oh, there we go. I'm a little bit, I'm a little scared from my A-level results. Is there anything you'd recommend to help this? Mm -hmm. um, I'll let you take that one because you're a lot closer to A-levels yeah. <laughs> than me. Well, I was really scared too, but I think the main thing is there's always going to be options, no matter what grades or whatever like you get. Um, yeah, there's not much. You're going to be nervous. Every Me and my friends outside the gate of school were just like, oh my God, don't want to go in. So we're going to be nervous either way, but just stay calm and I promise you it will work out in the end. <laughs> yeah. Like, like we said, we've got like 90 students in the call centre just mm -hmm. like waiting to take the call. So we've all, been this, we've all been through the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So we're all there to help. Um, next question. So we got, can I still get in uh, September if I apply now? Um, yeah, so you can still apply now, um, yeah. which is a good thing. So clearing's like really flexible. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, you can definitely still apply now. Um, it just means, yeah, that you might have to do a little bit more on the UCAS side. Mm -hmm. um, so they'll have to do yeah a little bit more there. Um, but yeah, definitely. Um, next one. Uh, this one's definitely a question for you. So would you say it's a massive jump in the sense of difficulty from A-levels to start in your degree? Um, personally, no. I think a lot of people do say first year is kind of the easiest one. I would say it's probably easier than year 13 for me um, with law and a lot of my friends on other degrees would agree with that, um, especially freshers and stuff. They're all very, it's all very chill. <laughs> but yeah, um, it's different, but in a good way. Um, I think A-level is very stressful. You're there all day, you're there, um, no phones, uniform in some cases, and just the university is a completely different atmosphere very independent you're like and treat like adults <laughs> yeah so i wouldn't say it's a massive jump and 
get, I was very scared on like my first day, but I think it was real relief when I started my first year. Relief, relief in terms of. I think just anything new. I was just, I'm just really like scared about, just like oh, like any change in life. But um, once you got in, everyone became friends on like the first day because everyone's in the same position, and yeah, yeah it was a. Just a relief in the fact that it's okay, we're all in this together. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is a massive point, I'd say, is mm. that just everyone's in the same boat. Like, when you start, um, no, not many people know if you came through clearing or not either. You all start, of course, the same and everyone's still terrified because yeah. they're coming to a brand new place with no friends half the time. Mm. So, yeah, don't worry. You're always There's always someone in a similar position, isn't there? So, yeah, and it doesn't really matter if you've been, like, since January or since last month in my case last year like everyone was in the same boat doesn't matter you can't really prepare for the nerves but it's all good once you get in there yeah for sure um cool so that was jess's question um da -da -da -da. someone's commented to one i did earlier so i've heard some people get in through clearing but it's not unheard of it's not heard of so yeah my my brother came through clearing um really late so he applied in like uh august july so he applied in like july so like a month before clearing uh, at the latest i think so and then and he came in through clearing so yeah it's definitely still doable um obviously the earlier you do it the, the easier it is i guess but um yeah he still came through so it's fine um <clears throat> so we've got another one from quirky melia um i'm so nervous about results day what happens if i don't get the grades i want um, so I didn't get the grade I want in one of my A-levels, maths, which if you guys take it, you'll probably know how horrible it is. But um, yeah, they were really flexible. And a lot of the time, if you miss a grade or like you can still get onto a course, if not a very similar course to what you want. And if you just call up, even if you don't get the grades you need or want, there can def there's definitely flexibility in some courses. Um, just give us a ring. Don't panic. There'll always be a way to get onto the course you want. And yeah, yeah, cool. Um, and yeah, um, a lot of courses as well. Well, some courses it depends on the university, but some courses um, and unis will offer you a different course sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, for example, like our marine biology course um, could be like quite high grades to get on. Yeah. And if you don't get those specific grades, they could offer you another course in the same school. Mm -hmm. So you still be doing like marine and ocean stuff, but just not the specific course that you want or they could offer you a foundation year yeah. so it's not the end of the world on results day and um, there's always an option somewhere for you which is quite nice um cool got another one um results day is my deal breaker i'm so scared yeah i, I felt that as well yeah <laughs> we all everyone's in the same boat honestly i was terrified but it's fine just <laughs> try and be as little nervous as possible and just go in with high hopes and then if anything goes wrong on results day, there'll always be a course or option for you. Definitely. Um, next one. I think this one's more for you as well. So um, <laughs> it's from Samara. So um, were you in student accommodation for your first year? Um, and if so, which, where, which one did you stay in? Uh, yeah, I was in student accommodation for my first year. And I stayed in St. Thomas Court, which is a privately owned one. Um, but the university is still offering um, their own halls, such as Robbins, um, Francis Drake, I can't think of, Mary Newham, stuff like that. <laughs> I don't know all of them off the top of my head. <laughs> but um, yeah, if you, you can look into both and there's definitely affordable options and they're all pretty much within five, 10 minutes to campus. It's a very walking city. Yeah, mm. yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, there's two, the two big ones you mentioned. They're like right in the middle of campus, aren't they? Like, yeah. Literally, you could probably roll out of bed to your yeah. lecture, <laughs> <laughs> like thirty seconds in or something. Um, and there is like we can actually guarantee accommodation as well. Um, um, so yeah, for students coming through, um, yeah. And there's an option on the call center. So if you're coming through clearing, um, they'll the students will ask you at the end, do you want to pass you through to the accommodation call center? Mm. Um, and then there's um, a few students on that side which have all the information about prices, rooms, sizes, distance from campus, and then they can like get you in on those as well, which is really good. So yeah, two call centers, yeah. bonus. <laughs> um, cool. Oh, are there laptops on site? Because um, mine isn't great. <laughs> um, so you can actually rent them from the library. So we're in the library now um, and you can go, I think it's like on the main floor you come in, you can mm. 
with your like student cards you can just come in and borrow a laptop for the day and then they've got loads of like desktops as well so they're like yeah pretty accessible mm. aren't they yeah loads in the library and like every study room there's either one or two and then there's like just rows and rows of them <laughs> everywhere in the library <laughs> nice and then if you're doing like creative courses as well there's loads of mm. um imax that you can use um so like it's all open access isn't it for like yeah just yeah whenever you study best basically mm. um next question um Will I be able to get accommodation if I come through clearing? Um, yeah, so um, I've just been told that we like guarantee accommodation, so you should be fine coming through with that, which is hopefully a sigh of relief for everyone. Um, next one, is there a limited amount of courses offered through clearing? Um, I'll probably take this one. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I'm um, working in clearing, so I'm like helping run the clearing call center with um, a lot of the student ambassadors. Um, so there are limited places um, and it's basically down to how many spaces we've filled in, in that already by, based on everyone else's um, grades and um, that they've got already. So we get the grades a little bit earlier than you do and um, just so then we can place everyone on the courses and then we know how many spaces we've got for the rest of them um, and then we can then give that to the student ambassadors and let them know how many spaces are on the courses. Um, so yeah, there are some courses are limited. Um, I know, for example, like medicine and dentistry, um, they're pretty much full and you won't be able to get a space through clearing on this. It's quite rare. Whereas other courses, um, just because of the space that they teach in, um, we have loads of space. So we it's like quite a large, uh, yeah, capacity for the course and um, so it's quite easy to get in on those um, but yeah I, I don't know off the top of my head which ones you're interested in but um, yeah if you if you phone up on the day they'll be able to tell you if you've got space but that changes between each university as well so it's really like it, it is best to just phone up mm -hmm. and just see what they've got available they'll be able to teach you through it rather than just risking it um, if that makes sense um, Oh, here's a good one from Ella. So what sort of questions will they ask when I call? Um, I'm going to pass this one to you because you phoned yeah. up, so um, you know. <laughs> the main kind of obvious questions was um, what grades did I get, um, which courses, um, my GCSE results and all that kind of technical stuff. Um, and then once I kind of gave them all the information and my contact details, um, they kind of, from, I think it's like a course expert or something on law and um, call me back up and then asked me a bit about if I wanted to do anything more about the course um, and kind of my bit personal interests and stuff just to see if I'd be a good fit um, and then basically I just submitted my personal statement onto UCAS and did like a entry towards Plymouth and they accepted it, I think the next day so there wasn't that many real questions to ask just kind of grades and a bit of personal information but that was really about it. That's yeah. cool. So it's not like an interview then. You know, no, it, like you're not getting grilled on the phone. No, it wasn't. It was a very easy and like chilled experience. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Nice. Hopefully that's answered that one for you, Ella. Next in, sorry, I'm like a dad with this. I'm just like, hello. <laughs> um, well, there we go. What? Um, this one's from Charlie. So we got. What kind of things do I need when I call? I'll give this one to you again. <laughs> yeah, just. Um, I think you need your. It would be good to have like kind of sort of a personal statement ready. I kind of polish mine off on the day, I had a bit of a rough one and then just kind of pushed off when I was applying um, for UCAS on the day. But I think you need your personal statement, UCAS number. UCAS number would be like the best thing to yes. have on the day, I'd say. Um, and then I think I'd just have my grades and then obviously you kind of know your personal information off the top of your head, but if you needed to yeah. write that down then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. hopefully know your address and yes. <laughs> own phone number and email address and stuff. But I think that was about it. I didn't think I needed too much um, information on the day, really. Yeah, from like our side, from the call centre side, when I've been in there, I'd say, yeah, exactly what you said. Mm -hmm. um, just your personal information, your grades is like a big one. And that UCAS number is really important because it helps us like link link up with UCAS so we can pull data from them. Um, so then we can like match your accounts and then it just makes it easier for, for um, applying basically. 
Um, do, 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 do. I've got another one here. So through clearing, I would be changing course from what I applied for. What do I need for this? Um, so we, from the call center side, I think we treat this like really similar to, to normal clearing for students who like are coming through without a course. Um, so it's just really similar stuff like the grades that you've already got, your personal information, that UCAS number is probably the most important thing. Um, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll guide you through it from there. Um, so that's, that's what I'd say with that one. Um, got one from, oh, it's gone. Got one from Rose. Where's it gone? There we go. Um, what's the phone number on results day? Um, I'm not that good at remembering things like that. So <laughs> if you go on the website, um, then yeah, website's the best. Just Google. Yes. Just Google it. Like it's twenty twenty three. I'm pretty sure it's like plastered on the website now. It's <laughs> yeah. all clearing on the Plus Uni website, so it should be on there. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's just your classic like eleven digit number. Um, starts oh three. I know that oh three 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 maybe something like that. Um, it's on the website. Just Google. Plymouth Uni clearing, and I 100% guarantee it'll turn up. up. <laughs> Google's pretty good these days. Um, oh, oh, someone's just written it. Um, 0333 <laughs> Do you think that was better than Google? I'm not sure. We'll, we'll leave yeah. you to decide. <laughs> Let me know. Um, cool, here we go. Uh, da -da -da -da. I've been out of secondary school for about, I'm still doing dad mode low, but like, <laughs> Like face up here, like I need to like grow up. Don't we? There we go. There we go. Um, I've been out of secondary school for about two years now. Am I going to have to write an exam? I'm going to give this one to you. Um, well, I know on my course because I was obviously 18 when I started because I came straight from sixth form. I think I'm probably like one of the youngest ones in the course. I've got a lot of like like 20, 21 year olds, obviously in first year, and then up to I think. Lady's like 45. I don't want to say on that because she's watching. But um, yeah, we've got a lot of mature students um, that they've either done like maybe a foundation year, which kind of eased them back into it, or they can just, um, there's a lot of support, especially with coursework on the first kind of semester. There's a lot of support with, um, we use a like IRAC method in law, which is like a specific method. So it might not be on your degree, but they gave a lot of help with how to use it in essays and writing coursework. So there's definitely the support there. Um, and two years, I know a lot of people on my course had a lot longer. Like this boy went to Australia for like eight, seven years. So, and he's fine. So <laughs> you should be good. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There'll um, be support there for you. There's also the writing cafe. Have you used that? I haven't, but I know a lot of people that have and found it very useful in doing their coursework and any essays they need to do. Yeah. So the writing cafe is in the library on the ground floor mm. and if you need any help with your essays um they basically we basically like pay students to help other students with their writing and essays so yeah if you've been out for two years and you're a bit out of the flow with it that's absolutely fine like you can come in and get support like they're super helpful um and yeah just any tips on things like that so they're pretty good um yeah my brother again he came through clearing and he had about two years out as well um from studying and then he worked for two years and then came back to uni um, and then had to write exams and do things like that and um, yeah I think he was absolutely fine I mean he passed so <laughs> all, all was well in the end I'd say um, cool we've got another one uh, this one's from Charlie um, if I don't get my grades is it still worth calling to see if I can get in Yes, absolutely. Even if you just got like a question, just phone up. We're like, like I said, 90 of us on the day, happy to help any way we can. And yeah, any questions or with grades again, you might actually meet the requirements because I think they kind of like drop a little bit depending on each university and they can we can see if we've got space for you. Yeah, definitely. And um, yeah, uh, leads on to, there's another question here as well. Um, that, like these two sort of like linked together. So will UCAS show what courses are available on clearing or do you have to phone? Um, so yeah, UCAS has started doing a new thing where they will like offer you a new course. Um, I think it's almost like, I can't remember how, they described it almost like Tinder, like it'll just pop up a course <laughs> and then you get to swipe left or right. Yeah. Um, so that's a new thing they're trialing. So they might do that, um, but yeah, at the end of the day, they're only going to show up like random ones. And yeah. if there's a university you know you want to go to, it's best to just phone them up because mm. they're going to have like all the information and things like that, um, which is really good. Um, 
so yeah i'd i'd always just phone up um like yeah just beat the fear of what we said earlier of like just yeah. pressing the button and just press the button and speak and, and we almost do the rest for you yeah so. and i think also if you call up on results day about like a certain course and something might be like it might be full or anything's not quite right with that degree we can also um find you courses that have clearing spaces like similar like say computer science and computer engineering and stuff like that just like similar courses that we can find on the phone but might not be as good on the UCAS thingy the tinder like thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's definitely worth a call yeah definitely um and yeah just a recap earlier like if you pre-register with um clearing with us um it will get you into like a priority line so you will actually speak to people quicker like ahead of the queue so it's yeah it's basically like queue jump really um which is pretty good and then yeah so you don't have to sit listening to the awful hold uh, amazing hold music that we have <laughs> um cool we've got another one i'm gonna go dad mode again because my eyes are going um finish my foundation year wondering when we get into for next year lectures and stuff um so for you i'm pretty sure you go straight from a foundation year into your first year yeah um you don't really have to like apply for your course again because your place is already reserved so you should be able to just like load straight on um if you don't have any information, I would speak to your lecturers on the foundation and then they'll yeah. be able to like help you with that. I think because she said info for your next lectures or for on the app, I've had all my like lectures and on email they've, so you might want to check that. If not, yeah, just contact your lecturers and say what's going on. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, doo -doo -doo, done that one. Doo -doo -doo, clearing courses are on the way. Oh, someone's answered a question for us. That's <laughs> very you. kind of the Plymouth Gazette. Cheers. Um, wow. Ah. I'm such an old man together right now, aren't I? Look at this. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Ah, that's a good point. This Plymouth Gazette, you're yeah, spitting facts right now. Um, also, not all courses examine through exams. Some just do coursework and practical. So, um, yeah, going on earlier, what Ed was saying. Um, yeah, well, I'll go really old school. Like when I did uni, like quite a few years ago, um, it was 100% coursework based. So I never had to do an exam after A-levels ever again, which was the dream because um, I'm very much a practical person, well, not with TikTok, clearly. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's very much like playing to my strengths and just yeah, going into that coursework base and projects and things like that. So yeah, you do have some courses that don't examine through exams and mm. yeah, that is always good. Do you know what your course breakdown is? Yeah, so first year with... Um, law it's quite a written subject but i know other degrees definitely do more practical i've got a practical um module in september which might be a nice break but i had um per term i had three bits of three modules and then two of them were coursework and one of them were exams so you kind of have a bit of both kind of like sixth form if you do coursework in sixth form just a bit of both but definitely other degrees do do more practical stuff and um i have a more coursework more exams it just depends what you're applying for really yeah definitely um yeah i think we're gonna have to wrap it up but there is a really good question so i'm just gonna sneak that one in there um da, 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 da. if you achieve the requirements for your course do you need to do anything to secure your place um so if you log into ucas hub there should be a button that says like congratulations you got in and then just maybe uh, there should be a button that basically says yes i want to confirm my place and you just hit yeah. that about 50 times and then you should be in um which is yeah the happy yeah. part of it all isn't it yeah <laughs> believing um cool so yeah i think we're gonna have to wrap it up there but thanks ed for yes. coming along thanks um, guys it's been great and yeah if you phone up the clearing call center maybe you'll speak to ed yes i'll be one of, i'll be working so hope to see you hope to speak to you <laughs> nice and then yeah hopefully we can help everyone get through clearing and get to university um but yeah thanks for joining our live and there'll be loads more information on the website and things like that so yeah cheers for coming <laughs> I think you pressed it with that one. Where are you? I'm so old.